is all of its feelings. Do you believe me if I say all these tracings are of same normal cardiogram? Yes, they are. To understand this, you must know working of chymograph. So, let's begin. Chymograph is an essential instrument used to record any biological activity. So here we have Sherrington's Starling's drum or chymograph. This chymograph uniformly moves the recording surface at the desired speed. So let's study each and every part of the chymograph and how it works. Chymograph consists of primarily two main components, a sturdy base and a central metal shaft projecting upwards from it. The base is equipped with capability to rotate the shaft. In earlier days, the shaft was rotated by pulley system and such drums are called as pulley driven drums. However, as technology advanced, these were gradually replaced by electrically driven drums and eventually by physiographs featuring ink and paper recording systems. Fast forward to today and we have state of the art computerized physiographs that enable precise recording of biological activities. Since we have recorded the experiments using pulley driven drums, let's dwell deeper into this type and draw comparisons with electrically driven drums. Starting with the base of the pulley driven drum, you will notice leveling screws at the bottom. These screws play crucial role in maintaining the drum perfectly horizontal even on uneven surfaces. This horizontal alignment ensures the shaft remains perfectly vertical. This is the fundamental requirement for accurately recording the complete range of pointer movements. Another important feature is side hoof located at the top front part of the base. This allows the drum to be positioned on its side, ensuring the shaft aligns horizontally. This arrangement is used when pointer moves horizontally as during ergography experiment. Moving on to the next part, the cone wheel bearing four pulleys. The largest is designated as number one and the smallest as number four. They are internally connected with gear system and the shaft. Pulleys allow for varying the speed of the shaft rotation. On the opposite surface of the drum, there is gear knob with clutch mechanism. Drum has three gears, neutral, slow and fast. In neutral gear, the drum cannot rotate the shaft. In the fast gear, shaft rotates at faster speed and in slow gear it rotates at slower speed for the same pulley combination. The clutch ensures the selected gear remains engaged. Similarly, electrically driven drums also offer adjustable speed settings ranging from 0.12 mm per second to 640 mm per second. You can observe here how just by changing the clutch in the desired speed slot, we can change the speed of the chymograph. Both the types of drums possess on and off switch to control the shaft rotation. Additionally, the top surface of the both types of drums houses electrical unit. It facilitates connecting the drum with another instruments in the circuit. These are the terminals to connect wires. When drum is taken in the circuit, it acts as circuit breaker. This small flexible metal piece is called contact foil. When moved backward, it completes the electrical circuit and allows current to flow. Okay, now let's study the shaft. As you can note, a triangular metal piece is projecting out from the base of the shaft. This is called striker and it moves along with the shaft. With every rotation, striker moves the contact foil backwards. This completes the electrical circuit if the drum is in circuit. 
This setup is particularly useful in skeletal muscle experiments. The striker can be separated so as in one rotation it can complete the circuit twice. Strikers are separated while studying the effect of two successive stimuli in skeletal muscle. If you observe the shaft, top half of the shaft has a narrow groove with a metal piece within it. This piece is connected with the screw on the top of the shaft. It helps to adjust the level of recording surface. Let's now focus on the recording surface, known as chymograph. It is a hollow, lightweight cylinder of circumference 47 cm. The top and bottom surface of the cylinder has radiating metal bars with a standard sized hole in the center. These metal bars assist in handling the cylinder and fixing it onto the shaft. Cylinder is inserted into the shaft through its central holes. Lower end of the hole has a notch or nowadays the cylinder comes with notches on four sides. These notches allow the cylinder to pass down through the metal piece of the shaft and the cylinder rests on the upper part of the metal piece. Then the level of the cylinder is adjusted by moving the top screw of the shaft which moves the metal piece and hence the cylinder resting on it. Once the desired position is achieved, cylinder is locked in place with the key. So here is the key. It ensures that the cylinder moves synchronously with the shaft's speed. For recording the activity, a glazed paper is snugly fitted around the surface of the cylinder. It is fixed with the help of gum, which is applied only at the edge of the paper, vertical edge of the paper. The cylinder is then rapidly rolled over the sooty flame until the entire surface becomes evenly black. This process is known as smoking the cylinder. And now it is ready to record the activity. So when the writing point of the lever moves along the surface of the smoked paper, it removes the soot and the white paper beneath is revealed. And such recording we call it as tracing. After completing the recording, it is appropriately labeled, detailing the recording conditions. Labeling the tracing is typically done using glass rod with pointed but smooth tip. However, it is essential to note that the recording of experiment is temporary and easily lost if anything touches the paper. Therefore, after the recording, paper is cut at the appropriate place and carefully immersed in a solution of resin in methylated spirit or white shellac in spirit and later allowing it to dry. This process is known as varnishing and it renders record permanent. Now let's proceed to set the drum in motion. The pulley driven drum must be connected to the pulley on the working table, which also features a set of four pulleys. The drum is connected to the table pulley using a cord loop. In cardiac muscle experiments, common pulley combination is 2 is to 3 with slow gear, meaning the second pulley on the table is connected to the third pulley on the drum with the gear set into slow. In this configuration, when the table pulley completes its two revolutions, in the same time drum pulley completes its three revolutions. As you can observe, this speed allows the drum to move at a speed suitable to distinguish all the components of normal cardiogram without wasting recording paper. To demonstrate comparison, another cardiogram is recorded adjusting the pulley combination to 1 is to 3 with slow gear. This results in faster drum movement and chymograph completes its rotation very quickly. As you can note, with faster speed, beats are separated more widely. Conversely, for the third tracing, the pulley combination is set to 4 is to 3 with slow gear, resulting in slower drum movements. As you can observe, drum is moving very slowly and hence the beats are recorded 
very closely spaced. This compact tracing makes it difficult to differentiate the components of the cardiogram. Therefore, while recording the experiment, pulley combination is carefully selected to ensure proper visualization of all the cardiogram components while minimizing paper wastage. And that concludes our exploration of Sherrington Starling's drum. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.